I shall awam when I begin this lesson by giving all praise, honey, and glory to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, Waha Raka Kwadash, which in the ancient Hebrew tongue would be the correct names of the Heavenly Father, His beloved Son, and the Holy Spirit. I also would like to give double honors to my teachers, the head apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Much due honors and respect to the sincere brethren out there that's also laboring in his work. And as always, want to say shalom to the believers, you know, the Akim as well as the Aqua, which will be you brothers along with the sisters that subscribe to this truth as well. So, yeah, the topic of this sitting right here is going to be centered around perfection, all right? Which, to the naked eye, a lot of you out there would perceive to become perfect is only reserved to the works of the flesh, which that's a feat that will not be fully accomplished until we're in the kingdom. As it is written, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah is going to place the laws in our inward parts, meaning what? We're not going to offend ever again, you know, as it concerns breaking the law. So that's one facet, if you will, concerning perfection. But also to become perfect means to finish. And this is why Lord Yahweh Shah made the statement, He that endureth unto the end, the same shall be saved. For an example, if I was to pay you to cut my grass, you could do a great job. But if you don't finish it, then the work is not perfected. See that? So that's another form of perfection right there. You see? But also, as it concerns the believers, you know, the brothers and sisters whom Yahweh Bashem Yahweh was gracious and merciful enough to call you into this marvelous light, you know, and to open up your mind so that you might be able to retain the proper knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of the scriptures. But that's a form of becoming perfect as well. And it tells you that in the book of Romans, the 12th chapter and the second verse, you know, concerning renewing your mind so that you might know that acceptable and perfect will of your how about you, how was that? You know, because you're going to have a lot of brothers out there who teach this word, who might not know every in-depth breakdown, yet they understand the will of the Most High, you know, in the grand scheme of things, in the big picture. You see, they have perfect understanding concerning this gospel as it's, uh, you know, presented in its purest form, see? But as it pertains to this lesson right here, balance is also a form of becoming perfect or perfection itself. Meaning you can't develop one outlook, you know, or one emotion such as love and expect to be considered perfect, man. And this is where you people err. And this is where you have charged the Heavenly Father and His Son with, you know. You have this warped outlook that the Most High and His Son is uh, only geared towards one emotion, man. And that's love. And if that was the case, this would make the Lord imperfect. See? But as it were, Yahweh Bashem Shah, he covers all sides of the spectrum, meaning he doesn't only deal with the uh, emotion of love, but also hate. See, and this is what makes him perfect, all right? Now, the scriptures tell you that we are to become perfect as our Father is in heaven, meaning you actually have to develop <laughs> the quality of hate, man, in order to become perfect. And that statement right there is going to cause a lot of people to stumble. Because you got a lot of uh, Jakes who know that they're Israelites who subconsciously bring that Christianity, you know, in the modern sense of the word, into this arena. They subconsciously hold fast to the things that they was brought up on. Case in point, IUIC, Israel United in Christ. Which, by the way, the elect is not going to be united under the banner of the name Christ, man. We're going to come under the name of Yahweh Shah. But that in itself is an example of um, Israelite groups out there, you know, who are nothing more than Christians with an Israel twist to it, you see? So a lot of Jakes is going to stumble at that idea and the fact that you have to develop a hatred, man, a perfect hatred to actually become perfect. <laughs> see that? Now, does this mean just a random form of hate? Of course not, because everything have a balance. You are to hate what Yahweh Bashim and Yahweh Shah hate. All right? And that's the wicked. In fact, this is a commandment, man. Matter of fact, let's go there. This is uh, the book of Amos, the fifth chapter. It's starting at the 14th verse. It says, seek good and not evil. Yeah, and this is what we are to do. 
This is what Yahweh Hashem Yahweh requires of us to seek good. And it tells you that in the book of uh, Jeremiah, the sixth chapter, how we are to ask for the old paths, you know? So what's a form of seeking good? You know, studying, you know, watching these videos, taking notes. If you have a spirit on you to teach, you know? If you're a believer and that's not your lot, then, you know, you watch the videos. Uh, if you're in a position where you can become a helper, do anything to help the ministry, you know, whether it's something as subtle as finding a camp in your city and, and bringing the brothers uh, water or whatever out to the camp, or um, if you have the financial means to help brothers out. That's a form of seeking good, you know? But ultimately, it, it uh, concerns this knowledge, see? That's seeking good. See, seek good and not evil that ye may live. And that proves right here that this word is uh, the driving force behind life. This is the bridge to eternal life. See that? And our Lord Yahweh Shah made the statement concerning that. Uh, the words that I speak unto you, they are life. See? It says, and so the Lord, the power of hosts, shall be with you. As ye have spoken. See? Verse 15. And this is the point. It says, hate the evil and love the good. Yeah, so this is a part of um, the commandments right here, man. This is what the Lord is commanding you. See? Let's read it again. It says, hate the evil and love the good. See that? And establish judgment in the gate, which that's what we do. When we go out on the highways and byways, we establish judgment in the gate. It may be that the Lord, power of hosts, will be gracious unto the remnant of Joseph. Yeah, and that word Joseph right there is interchangeable with Israel. All right? So in order for the Lord to uh, be gracious unto us, you know, and his mercy to rest upon you, then you have to hate the evil and love the good. See that? And what's the evil? Well, everything that you see being perpetuated here in America, which America is the wickedest kingdom ever erected, man. This is pretty much the springboard which propels the abominations that you see throughout the world, okay? Matter of fact, let's further prove that Yahweh Yahweh possess that emotion, and that's what we are to possess. We are to be as the Father, man. We are to be in harmony with Yahweh Yahweh Shah. We, has, we ought to be as one, you know? Meaning we should be on the same accord with the Heavenly Father. All right? This is Ecclesiastes, the 15th chapter and the 13th verse. The Lord hateth all abominations. See, the Lord hateth all abominations. And they that fear Yahweh Shem Yahweh love it not. Right? So if you claim to fear the Most High, if you claim to believe in Yahweh Shem Yahweh then you're not going to love abominations as well. You're going to hate abominations as well. Now, you might have one of these wacky, tacky Christians out there who have come across this precept and say, well, the Lord hate the abominations, you know, not the sinner. <laughs> you know, the old uh, phrase that these so-called Christians have coined. The Lord hate the sin, not the sinner. Well, if the Lord hate abominations, he hate the driving force behind those abominations, man. The abominations, the wickedness, you know, that you see you know, throughout the planet Earth and mainly here in America, there's a source to that wickedness. And by now, if you haven't got the memo, it would be Esau, the wicked, the so-called white man, the wicked himself. Matter of fact, let's prove that. This is uh, Malachi, the first chapter, starting at the first verse. It says, The burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi, I have loved you, saith the Lord, yet ye say, Wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, said the Lord, yet I love Jacob. So here it is. This is the scripture right here where the Lord is not only, you know, proclaiming that he actually love, okay? Yeah, the Lord love. And he's going as far to tell you who he love. See, let's read it again. I have loved you, see, said the Lord, yet ye say, wherein has thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, said the Lord, yet I loved Jacob. So, you go, you got these so-called Christians out there, and their whole thing is God is love. Yeah, well, that's true to a certain extent. God is love, but we read right here that the Lord have uh, 
a particular nation that he loved. Yeah, he loved. When you love, that love have to be geared towards a, a, a certain person, you know, or thing, all right? A certain possession. You don't love everything, man. Here it is, Jake. They want to put the Lord in a box, okay? And not just you Israelites, but all of you people out there outside of this truth. You know, you want to put the Lord in a box and, and limit Give the Lord limitations. Here it is. You got certain foods you love and certain foods you hate. You know, you got certain TV shows you love, a certain uh, form of entertainment you hate, man. But here it is. The Lord, he's designated to love everything. No, man. See? But scriptures tell you uh, who the Lord love. And that's Jacob, which is Israel, all right? See? It says, said the Lord, yet I love Jacob, verse 3, and I hated Esau. And that's plain, and I hated Esau. So when the scriptures say, the Lord hateth all abominations, well, technically the Lord is saying he hate Esau, man, because Esau is the driving force behind the abominations that you see. Is it not the so-called white man who have poisoned your water and, and your food, man? You know, you got genetically modified organisms. See? Is it not Esau who, who are responsible for throwing off the damn ecosystem, man? The reason why you're at the brinks, you're uh, one step between death, is because of Esau, all right? This man has thrown off the ecosystem. You have certain species at the brinks of extinction. Shit, you got uh, certain species that's already classified as extinct. You know, like the white rhino, you know? Esau is responsible for that, man. The chemtrails that you breathe. And, and we're not going to mention, um, you know, this agenda of homosexuality being brought to the forefront, transgenders. Man, if this man was to continue at this rate, it won't be any more flesh left to be saved. And our Lord Yahweh Shah spoke concerning that in the book of Matthew, the 24th chapter, man. See? So the abominations that you see on the planet Earth, the driving force behind that is Esau. So again, when you read Ecclesiasticus, the 15th chapter and the 13th verse, the Lord hateth all abominations. In essence, the Lord is saying he hate Esau, man. All right? And we read it right here. Again, Malachi 1 and 3. And I hated Esau. <laughs> see? Why? Because Esau is the driving force behind that abomination. See? And I hated Esau and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. See? So that's going to be ultimately what the Lord is going to prepare for these devils. He's going to lay your heritage waste, which uh, he did this before in the form of the ancient Roman Empire. But for the sake of prophecy, the Lord put a resilient spirit on these devils and they returned and, and rebuilt, you know, as it tells you. Right here in the fourth verse, whereas Edom said, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. And that was fulfilled right here in America. They rebuilt Rome. Okay. And that's why these devils have that uh, spirit of triumph on them. They believe they can overcome whatever obstacle and get over whatever hurdle. That's why you hear these devils uh, with the saying, make America great again. That's the same spirit they had after Rome fell. See? But you're not going to uh, accomplish that feat here in this lifetime. This is your last run. See? It says, whereas Edom said, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus said the Lord of hosts, they should build, but I will throw down, and they should call them the border of wickedness. Right? So if the Lord hate abominations, that means he hate wickedness, which Esau is hand in hand with. Wickedness and abominations is in the same breath with Esau, man. See? So for all of you who hold fast to this idea of hate the sin but love the sinner, then this means you clearly don't understand the scriptures in, in the will of your Yahweh and Yahweh Shah. All right? The Lord not only hate the sin, but he mainly hate the driving force behind the sin. See? It says, they shall build, but I will throw down, and they shall call them the border of wickedness, and the people against whom the Lord have indignation forever, okay? And that 
where indignation goes back to righteous anger, which anger is breeded by hate. In order for you to get angry, you know, you, you, you must hate. If the Lord had just the emotion of love, then he wouldn't become angry, man. See that? So, again, if you are to become perfect as your Father is in heaven, and that's what we are being groomed and fashioned to be, we are being groomed to be uh, in a royal stead, you know, and, and receive the inheritance of Yahweh Shah, which that's the pecking order. If we're going to be in the same stead as Yahweh Shah, that means we're going to be aligned with the Heavenly Father, man. Okay? Well, that means we have to be in harmony with him. It's not going to be, you know, anyone to inherit the kingdom of heaven or be joint heirs with our Lord, and they're going to have a different outlook than what the Lord has. No. If the Lord hate the wicked, then you are to hate the wicked. Matter of fact, this is out of the book of Psalms. The 139th chapter. I started the 19th verse. It says, surely thou will slay the wicked. Right, and we just read who the wicked is, man. And whether you believe it or not, whether you are on board, this is not going to somehow offset the intents and purposes of Yahweh Bashem Shah. His decree is written in stone, so to speak. The Lord has sent out the order, man. He's going to put down the wicked, these devils. Okay? And if you're against that, that means you're wicked. Okay? Because the only thing... Again, the only thing this man puts out is the vibration of death. All right? It says, Surely thou shalt slay the wicked, O Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. Depart from me, therefore ye bloody men. Yeah, and that's dealing with Esau. We, we want no part of this devil, man. See? For they speak against thee wickedly. And how do they speak against the Lord wickedly? In the form of their laws and legislations. For an example, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah have the decree written, you know, and in particular in the book of Leviticus, the 20th chapter and the 13th verse, that if man lieth with mankind as he lieth with a woman, they have both committed an abomination. They should surely be put to death. What well, Esau turned right around and celebrated homosexuals, man, and protected homosexuals. See? That's a form of them speaking wickedly against the how about how shot. See? For they speak against thee wickedly, and thine enemies take thy name in vain, Verse 21, and this is the point. It says, do not I hate them. See, do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee. See that? So in order for you to become perfect, you have to hate what the Lord hate. You have to be as the Most High. You have to have the same outlook as your how about See, all right? Verse 22, I hate them with perfect hatred. So you see the word perfect and hatred is in the same breath, meaning what? In order for you to uh, truly become perfect, you have to develop that quality, man, of hate. Hatred is a quality, man. In order for you to uh, do certain, well, in order for you to please your how about your house, you have to hate certain things. See? It says, I hate them with perfect hatred. I count them my enemies. See? So the overtone of this thing is really war. When you come into these scriptures, you have just enlisted in, in a battle, man. And the Lord Yahweh Shah made the statement concerning that. He said, um, you know, what um, soldier going to war, you know, count if not the cost. You know, building a tower or going out the war. You know? So the overtone to this thing is war. All right, this is a spiritual war um, between good and evil, righteousness and wickedness. Two and two set against another, uh, one extreme against another. No, um, no gray areas, man. No straddling the fence over here. Either you with us or against us. See? And there's also a statement that was made by our Lord Yahweh Shah. All right? So the moral of the story is what? The Lord hateth. And you should hate. Matter of fact, let's, let's continue to prove this point. All right? Um, this is Wisdom of Solomon, the 14th chapter. In um, the ninth verse, it says, For the ungodly and his ungodliness, which is dealing with who? Esau. So when the scripture again say the Lord hate all abominations and the Lord hate wickedness, and in this case ungodliness, there's a source behind it. <laughs> in order for there to be ungodliness, 
that has to be the ungodly. See? And the Lord have put the spirit on us to identify and target the source, you know, of the wickedness that you see. See that? It says, for the ungodly, see, and his ungodliness are both alike hateful unto Yahweh Bashem Let's read this again. For the ungodly and his ungodliness are both alike hateful, <laughs> see, unto Yahweh Bashem man. See that? So that's another cut on all of you out there who believe that somehow the Lord is only geared towards one emotion, man. Did not the Lord sanction the great flood? See? This is uh, Wisdom of Solomon, uh, the 12th chapter. And um, um, all right. This is Wisdom of Solomon, the 12th chapter, and uh, I'll start at the 11th verse that says, For it was a cursed seed from the beginning. And what seed is this dealing with? Esau, the so-called white man. He was cursed from the beginning, see? For it was a cursed seed from the beginning. Neither didst thou, for fear of any man, give them pardon, see, for those things wherein they sinned. See, so Yahweh Bashem Shah. If he didn't pardon Esau, if he's not going to pardon him, then this means that the Lord is not all love, man. <laughs> See that? That that proves um, the, the, the difference right there. That's the uh, exact opposite, man. When, if you was all love, then you were pardoned, you know? Well, the Lord said he's not going to pardon Esau, man. And that um, links up with what we read earlier in Malachi. Um, the first chapter where the Lord said he would have an indignation or a righteous anger with these devils forever, man. See that? And it also tells you uh, in the book of Genesis how the Lord will have war with uh, Amalek, right, which is these so-called Jews, those gutter rats over there in Israel, from generation to generation, man. See that? So this idea, again, this idea of... Um, the Lord loving everyone, that's not in harmony with the scriptures right there. See that? So, um, you know what? I think I'll end it right there. I mean, um, enough been said concerning this topic. You know, again, in order for you to become perfect as your Father is in heaven, all right, as it is written in the scriptures, then you must uh, develop that, that attribute of hatred, man. Straight up. Okay? So, um, yeah, I just wanted to touch on that. Um, Lord, matter of fact, um, let me get one more real quick. In the book of uh, Ecclesiastes, the 27th chapter. And, uh, I started the 22nd verse. It says, He that winketh with the eyes worketh evil. And he that knoweth him would depart from him. Right, and that's where we come in at. The Lord gave us the spirit to know the wicked. So now we are to depart from him. You know? Now you have to coexist in this world. You have to work or whatever. You know? But this doesn't mean that you're going to um, have sympathy with the so-called white man or you're going to have the desire to see this place continue. No, we want to see this place overthrown. See? Verse 23, When thou art present, he will speak sweetly and will admire thy words, but at the last, he will write his mouth and slander thy sayings. And that's what you're witnessing right now. These devils are slandering uh, Israel and in particular the prophets. You know, they're trying to coin us as a hate group. You know, demonize us. See? Verse 24, and this is uh, the words of our Lord right here, man. See? I have hated many things, and that's another cut. The Lord said he hated many things, man. See? I have hated many things, but nothing like him. Whoa. <laughs> I have hated many things, but nothing like him. For the Lord will hate him. See that? For the Lord will hate him, man. 
You see that? So this proves that in order for you to uh, be in good graces with your how about Shemin how shy, you actually have to develop the, the attribute and the quality of hate. And that hate has to be geared towards who the Lord hate. And that would be none other than the so-called white man Esau. So yeah, I just want to touch on that. Lord willing, it was edifying. Till the next time I say, Shalom.